Welcome, welcome everyone to Chess with TV, episode 224. Today is March 12th, 2016. We're going to play in a bullet tournament today, one minute per side, no increment. It's about 25 minutes long, and I don't think I'm going to win first place. Take a look at the lineup today. We already have a 2400, 2200, 2000 rated player, and Cheswiz comes in fifth right now, 1986. Now, I have to admit, 1986 is a little low for Cheswiz. Usually, I'm about like 2886, but you know, still, these guys are some pretty strong opponents, so it's not going to be easy. And not only that, but people join this tournament during, you can see, there's 21 people in it right now but i would estimate that by the end of the tournament we're gonna have over 100 people in this tournament so it's not going to be an easy uh, lineup to be sure in fact i would be happy to be in the top 10 Nine, speaking of 10 seven, six, five, be quiet four, three, two, one, zero. so that is my goal today is to place in the top 10 of this tournament let's see how we can do 10 10 um, my, I'm now eighth, so by rating, it's it's already a stretch. But some more stronger players will join, so we'll see how it goes. Double king pawn opening. I'm happy with this opening. Quite familiar with it. Uh, looks like a Gioco piano or the Italian game. This is a very standard opening. There's nothing unusual about what we're seeing here. Bishop b4 check. Bishop d2 takes. Take with knight defending the e pawn. Next we will castle. Oh, d6 is a little slow. <coughs> I'm surprised by that move, um, and I like my center. So, oh, I should have played h3, H, uh, I think. Uh, let's take with the queen. Whoops, that's not really taking with the queen. But mouse lips are common in chess, um, especially when chess was is playing. So that, that was unfortunate. Queen e2, not the move I wanted to play. Uh, is it over now? I don't know. I'm down a pawn, but I do have these open files. So let's see what I can do to him. I'm going to go after this d pawn. Hopefully he can't just push it. And hopefully I can put a lot of pressure on it. Uh, I can see this move. And this move is exciting. He can't take me because of the pin. And then I come in here like this. So that won the pawn back, and I'm happy with my position again. Let's defend the e pawn. My, the clock is looking very good for me. I think I'm going to win this game. Uh, king, king in, of course. I think I'm gonna win this game on the clock. 13 seconds. Yeah, I should keep the bishop. I should keep the, the pieces on the board actually, uh, just because of the complexity. I want I want it to be a complicated game. I've got my pawns off the white squares, as you can see, that's a good thing for me. Uh, let's just move around a little bit here. Now let's force his pawns onto white. His knight is stuck in this location. This is kind of funny. Oh, that's pretty cool, right? But now I, I, I expected him to stop this pawn instead of allowing it to promote. He's out of time. Great. A win for the first game. So Chesapeake moves up to six, but all of these guys won, as you can see, and is uh, two wins. He's, he's only rated 1400, so it may not be that he wins the entire tournament. But uh, yes, you are. Bra -ha 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 -ha. Yes, I'm bra -ha -ing. Um, I, What I'm going to do right now is play another chess game. I'd like to tell people who are playing, oh look, I'm playing the tournament leader. This is very exciting. Uh, having a rating of 1462 tells me perhaps I'll be able to win, but he did just win his first two games. So this is gonna be an exciting game in any case. I'm expecting that move. Oh, that's, that's very strange to give up the bishop here. I don't think my opponent should have done that. Let's not give up my own bishop, though. Uh, I guess this way. If he castles king's out, I've got a pretty strong attack because all of my pieces are pointing that direction. So let's uh, go do that. I, I actually like f4 here. Oh, was my queen hanging? <laughs> Chess is so fun. You can just hang your queen. If it's a 1400, you totally won't notice. I'm going to play f4, f5 and try to open this up a little bit, bring my rooks in the game that way. Um, just because I have so much activity here with everything pointing toward the king. Yeah, this is pretty good for me with a rook lift. I can also attack his queen like this, which is very efficient. He only has 20 seconds. 
I think just fold the bishop back because the two attackers here are very strong. Uh, I have two attackers on this knight and he has only one defender. So now I win the knight. Pretty cool, this pawn is pinned, it cannot capture, that would leave my opponent in check. So that's very good for me. Let's just pull back and consolidate since I'm ahead of peace. I can win this game. Pre-move a couple of moves, and he's out of time. Good game. All right, streaming live at HD. Ah, I can never type that in time, so I, I, maybe I should just type it somewhere else, right? And then paste it in, I think that's what I'll do. So this game is against the 2400, much more uh, competent opponent, I must admit. That's a very strange sequence, though. The bishop out and back, I'm surprised by that. Okay, yeah, I expected that. So the d-pawn, not really happy with it. Let's push it. And then here. This is probably a mistake to push the d-pawn, but I'm, I don't like the isolated pawn. I don't think that knight has any good squares. Oh, that's pretty cool. Cool starry. Got to get this off of here. This, the discoveries the discoveries are quite painful. Um, I cannot play my knight that direction. Let's try it this way. This is kind of exciting. Wow. Um, what about this? Take, I take here, take, I pin, no, I can't do that. Oh, and I'm gonna lose my knight, aren't I? Um, so I have to defend the knight, which I won't, which is a stupid mistake. Yeah, so he holds this and wins. I'll have to resign. I'm way down on time. 13 seconds to 24 is a big difference. Ha! I typed it in time. So now people who are watching and are like, oh no, I'm in last place. They don't have to play in this tournament. They can just uh, watch me play in this tournament. Isn't that fantastic? It, it may be that as we get close to the end of the tournament, I will drop playing in it if I'm not near the top 10, and I will instead uh, watch those top players because it'll be fun to see exactly who's winning this strong tournament. There's a lot of strong players here. Check, I didn't mean to play knight f3. As you know, if you watch a lot of chess whiz, I like to play f4 in these positions. Um, but uh, it's still, it's still, oh, this is bad. This is bad for him. It's just very ugly. I have his king in the center. All of my pieces are out very quickly here. And the knight is gonna slice and dice him. There's a nice fork coming in here. In fact, this, this is like a checkmate fork. It's nice to fork, but it's even better to fork and checkmate at the same time. Should I take the exchange? No, let's just go here and then do something more mean to him later. I actually like this check. And then here, take the rook. I did have one more check which maybe I'll just play that next. Totally decimated this guy in like four moves. The problem was the move that I said was the problem. The, the queen trade pulling the king out, that was, that was bad. I just knew from instinct. It's not like I calculated, oh, you know, this is, this is exactly perfect for me to pull this king out and do all this brutal damage. What I knew was I played this opening a couple of tens of thousands of times, and I know that my opponents never do that, so there must be some serious problem. It's like intuition, but it's more like a vague memory of dying opponents, which is a very pleasant memory. So because I, because I have this vast database of barely remembered games, that, that allows me to come up with these conclusions about the moves and say, oh yeah, this is probably bad. I remember, I don't remember, but I think I kind of hazily remember something about this being horrible. Oh, you're out of time. <clears throat> so Chess was in 11th place. This is not too bad, but broken my win streak. Meanwhile, 2100, 2400, 2400. So we've got only two 2400s in the tournament right now. Neither of them in first place, but moving up quickly. That should be interesting. I think they're going to surpass this Jupet guy. He's a bit of an imposter. I'm trying to watch the chat at the same time, but there's a lot of people talking. Chesswiz just assumes his opponent has everything under control. That's a very interesting comment. I'm not sure if that's true. Do you have UFCF rating? as Goku. That's, that's an interesting question. Um, I won't tell you the answer because not everyone obeys everyone on the internet. This is a cool check right here. Check! It's, oh, it's not check. Okay, my rating is 100. Did you know 100 is the most popular? I don't want to take that. Chess rating? USCF chess rating? I, I was shocked when I learned this. I'm like, how could everyone be so bad, right? <laughs> you wouldn't think that 100, which is the lowest possible rating, would be so popular because you'd have to be so horrible at chess to 
get such a low rating. This is not good. Let's take this. Ah, pretty fancy way to cover h7, isn't it? Owned! Yeah, he just got destroyed by that little Tasuji right there. I've been watching the, the matches between AlphaGo and Nisero, and uh, that's why I said that word. If you don't know what it means, it means brilliancy. But of course, it's not English because, yeah. So what was I saying? Yeah, so <laughs> I want to tell you about the about 100, the rating 100 being the most popular. So it turns out there's some people who are so bad at chess that their rating should be somewhat below 100. But the rating system actually stops at 100. It's like, okay, you're at 101. Oh, you lost? You're at 100. And it stops right there. I'm playing a Fide Master here, so I'm going to try to focus. So that's why there's, oh no, so many people uh, push this maybe. So many people stuck at 100. And, and that was a surprise. There's pages and pages and pages of people who are rated exactly 100. It's kind of sad. Uh, this move is not okay. This move is better. No, the other move is better. Let's do this. As yes, this is not, not holding together very well, is it? I do have the two bishops, but now I don't. We have opposite color bishops here, which can be drawish, uh, but it also can be, it'll lead to a lot of moves, like tons and tons of moves before the game is over, which is probably problematic, actually, because I'm low on time. Those checks were smart for him, just to run me lower on time. Uh-oh. Checkmate, checkmate. <laughs> yeah, there's also checkmates. Um, the opposite color bishop is very dangerous to get checkmated because you lose. No, it's dangerous because uh, your bishop can't really fight what his bishop is doing. Let's play this line. Uh, most people don't even take the pawn because they're too much in a hurry to make move really, really quickly. Mm, this is weird. I'm actually going to play it this way. Whoa. Okay, so we're in a super weird position right now. And he's wasting a lot of moves, so I think I should be able to get something awesome here. Let's play rook in and start attacking this way. <laughs> no, this isn't worth it. Ah, oh, I wasted my time. Now it's probably even again. Castle queen side. Never mind. Never mind. I'm going to destroy his face. Here we go. Oh, no. What do I do? Check me. You. I don't even need this pawn. In fact, I hope he takes it because that just makes more open lines to his king. Anytime his king is way away from your king, you should just sacrifice all the things. That's exactly what I'm doing here. He's doing the same thing, but he's just a slower sacrificer. I'm a super fast sacrificer. Okay, I guess I'll save the bishop. No, I don't want to save the bishop. See how brutal this is? I'm hanging a piece over here uh, because I'm so excited to checkmate him. I have a7. If he takes, I have a7. I have rook c7. Very uh, brutal and quick moves. So now I'll save the bishop. <laughs> so I think getting those moves in there was pretty nice. Now he has a few moves here, but I don't think it's anything too scary. That was strange. That was strange. He's just trying to run me out of time, but it won't work. Because of checkmate. Oh, in three moves. I'm like, oh, it's a mate in three. That's because if I move my queen three times while you do something else, then I'll have you checkmated. Oh, the queen b7 is checkmate. And I can get there in three moves. Guess that's checkmate. Uh, shout out to the best chess streamer. Thank you, Roman Chess King. I'm actually the only chess streamer right now, as you can see. It says Chess Whiz and doesn't say anything else. So that's actually the key to being best is to be the only one. If you if you ever want to be the best in a field, find a field that no one is doing. For example, solving a Rubik's cube while riding a unicycle. The world record for that is quite poor. If you if you go to the Guinness Book of World Records, there are a few people who have tried that. And I think the record is like 28 consecutive Rubik's Cube solves without falling off the unicycle. 
and this is horrible. In fact, I think I'll sacrifice something and, and open this up a little bit, just because it's that bad. He hasn't castled, so check. <laughs> Super crazy. <laughs> um, check. Um, um <laughs> not sure what to play here. Let's try this. I don't need that pawn anyway. Oh, that didn't do much, did it? Okay, let's try this. 14 seconds now, so can't play any slower. Both our kings are stupid faces right now. Mm, that bishop, maybe I should have taken it. Yeah, this isn't very good at all. Oops, I meant to be here. I'll go there now. Okay, I'm going to resign this. Um, I'm in a, hurry, in a hurry to play more games. But also, that was quite bad. Chesuiz, notice me. Okay, I'm noticing you. It's over. I have the high ground. That's probably true. So I've been watching the matches. Am I in the top 10? That would be pretty fantastic. Chess was 16th. That's not very good. Hmm. I want to be in the top 10, so <clears throat> let's see if I can win this game and move up. Oh, look at that. A mail. I have three messages from Twitch. Are you guys following me? That's kind of creepy. I appreciate it, though. My watch tells me when you're following so that I can run away. Duck behind a dark alley and something, something. Ah, take, 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 take. Is this going to work? No. Yes, I gave him an isolated pawn. Wasn't that effective? Oh, look, now I can take a rook. I don't know how long that rook was sitting there, but however long it was, it was long enough for me to notice, which is the perfect length of a free rook, in my opinion. Hopefully I don't get checkmated here. This looks quite good. He's going to check me. And then he's going to say, oh, I, there's nothing I can do. Oh, except lose my queen for nothing. That's not very good. He resigns. Okay, Hunter Mind is down. Now I'm in the top 10. 13th. I really want to watch the top players here at the end of the tournament. So we'll see if I, if we have time to do that. I also want to finish in the top 10. Those might be mutually exclusive goals. And by that I mean can't do both. Let's give him the Isolady. Isolady? It's a new name for female isolated pawns. It's an Isolady. And it's looking pretty hot. I'm getting skewered here. That was not effective. Queen d5, bad move. Just walk in, walk out again. However, this bishop is so ugly. That's not a nice lady. I think he's going to regret this pawn. Look at that. Oh, it's terrible. Um, I don't know what you're doing, but I would suspect that it's nothing. Uh, here? <laughs> nice try, I guess, is my answer to that. Nice try. And here? I guess I probably could have just taken that, but... Whoa! Queen of seven, pretty cool. Saving everything, though. Now I can pick this up. Kind of risky, but it's better than being risque. And now everything is going according to plan. <laughs> totally fine here, guys. Totally fine. Um, where can I move this queen? Let's, let's, um, let's play here. <laughs> Check. Check. And defend all the things. This is super. I'm ahead like a rook or something. In 12 seconds. Yeah, let's get off this back rank here. Two seconds? How did that happen? Suddenly I have two seconds. Is this going to be a draw? 
I guess it's a draw. Oh, wow, that was terrible. Chess has really blundered that end game. Having an extra rook and spending a whole bunch of time wondering if he's going to get checkmated by the opponent's remaining rook is not a good use of time. I really should have been reading some, you know, novel and expanding my mind. I think this is going to be my last game, <clears throat> and then I want to watch Jupek because... Uh, the, there's about five minutes left in the tournament. I do want to spend some time seeing who's going to win, and it doesn't look like I'm going to hit. What is this? <laughs> what is this? I did not expect that, so this is going to be stupid coming right up. Stupidness on the way. B4. Oh, he's not playing B4. He's going to expand the stupidness first. Nice try. You cannot have the E-pawn. No, I'm not going to play Knight there, of course. Okay, close it. Stop attacking my things. Bishop e3, by the way, would have died to d4, so it's lucky I didn't do that. You might say, oh, it's pretty smart of chess whiz, but actually it was just lucky. I like bishop e3 now. This is kind of a problem for him. Um, here, and let's just move everything over here. Whoa, that was a surprising move for sure. Queen b3 might have been a mistake for him. Not 100%, but I'm like 99.9 .9 repeating percent. Sure that that was a mistake. So let's withdraw. I'm at 14th place, 15 points, but it's not looking too likely that I'm going to pass 20. The problem is these guys with 20 are going to move up a little bit. So in the last five minutes of the tournament, I'd actually like to take a moment to commentate on the top game. So if you don't want to see someone else playing chess and you want to see Chess Whiz, you can just tune off the TV right now. I mean your computer or whatever you're watching on because we're not going to play any more chess. Now we're going to watch the top players. By the way, there's a huge tournament going on in the future uh, under play and then tournament here. It's not really hard, easy to pick out, but in this list on the tournaments list of lichess.org, you can find Chess Whiz Cup four no kidding on march 26 we are going to have some huge prizes for a 30 second hyper bullet tournament so don't miss this tournament if you can't play chess quickly enough then just watch the stream instead because i'm going to do on this tournament exactly what i'm doing now unfortunately i'm not going to be able to um, play in that tournament because i'm going to be casting it instead so this is like my, my practice session to uh to cast a tournament. So we've got Jupek in first place by seven points. That is impressive. So let's look at his game right now. You can see it on the right here, uh, covered up by my beautiful logo. I'm clicking on him and nothing's happening. So apparently the first thing I need to learn is how to look at a game. So Jupek's playing white here. So let's flip the board. He's playing a four pawns, um, Al Alakin's defense attack, four pawns attack in, in the Alakin's. Oh, look, this is exactly like the game I got with the d5. The difference is going to be he's not going to blunder his d pawn, is my guessing. Interesting that his rating, <coughs> 2156, is similar to his starting rating for the tournament. If we look at, um, and let's, let's go back to the tournament with the same, how do you get back to the tournament right here? You look at his win-loss rate. He just lost one game. So it's strange his rating hasn't gone up by more. Uh, what have we missed? Whoa, whoa, crazy thing. Crazy things are happening. Why did not he recapture? Why did he not recapture immediately? I missed something totally obvious. King h8? Oh, he's threatening. He's threatening some awesome checkmates. And look at that. It's totally going to roll in. It makes me wonder what's going on. How is this Jupek beating this Fide Master? Rook g8 forced. What just happened? What's going on? I'm totally missing the game. <laughs> okay, so I'm not at the end. So chess is like an uber noob when it comes to watching chess, uh, but apparently black's queen is missing. So let's take a moment to find out what happened there. This was a required move to stop the uh, checkmate there. So yeah, we totally missed most of this game, but somehow there was an uber attack. Let's get back to the tournament because uh, that's going to be an easy win for Jupek. Seven points. There is his win right there. And he took out the second place player. So there is no way anyone can catch up to Jupek right now. 11 point difference here. A win is just four if you have a winning streak. And La Morocha, La Morocha does not currently have a winning streak. And neither does Plan B Pub. So these guys are, whoa, 20 points behind. It's not even close. Now, these two guys did not play nearly as many games you can see here. So let's take another look at one of Jupek's games. You can see him playing against Undertaker Bill to see exactly how he is destroying all of his opponents. Once again, this is upside down. Jupek, the white player here. So far, this looks like a typical chess was game. 
there's nothing too unusual about it. H4 is definitely not something I would be thinking about, but it's a very aggressive move. You can see even before he's castled or brought out all his pieces, he's already launching an attack against the Black King. It's a very it's a very sharp way to play. And I like it because it's a one minute game. King F1, wow. He's getting off this line and he's keeping his rook on the H file. So this is a very sharp way to play the game. He's leading his king right here. This is generally bad to have your king uh, dividing your rooks like this. You'd want your two rooks to be able to talk. Like, hi, I'm a rook. Oh, so am I. That's so interesting. When they're divided by the king, then they, uh, they're not nearly as effective because they can't switch to the files that they prefer. But he went for that so that he could have this rook still on this open line. And I think this is very bad for Jupek. I think he's in big trouble leading his king in the center. He at least could have castled queenside, I'm thinking. Uh, if we can scroll with the scroll wheel here. Okay, he couldn't really do that because the center opened up. He had to get away immediately. But uh, trade of rooks. He might be okay with these trades. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. What's going on? Free, free knight? What did I miss? Oh, the knight was under attack anyway. It would have been captured. Jupek a little bit low on time here. And there goes the queen. So Jupek loses this game. So that, that does give very nice discovery discover check right there. So I think Jupek paid that too riskily, trying to king f1 and, and h4, h5. I think that was too much aggression and too much risk. He would have been better off just castling. I think h4. I'm not an expert to say whether h4 was a good idea or not, but it sure did not work for him that game. So Jupek with the loss, that gives La Morocha a chance to catch up because the winning streak has ended. Let's take a look at La Morocha's game. Can we do that? Is he even playing right now? Oh, he's playing against Jupek. Perfect opportunity. So if he wins this game and he's the white pieces here, he does have a chance to not only gain two points and start a winning streak, but take the leader stuck at zero again, but with only 20 seconds left in the tournament. Psh, I'm wasting my time talking about it. It doesn't even matter. Jupek is going to win this tournament, but at least we can enjoy a nice high-level high game between a 2400 and, and someone who beat a bunch of 2400s. So... Let's see how this goes. I love this knight outpost. It's fantastic. There's no enemy pawns that can uh, can kick it away. There's no pawns here, so the knight can live there forever. Tournament's over. I still want to see this game. This is interesting. Knight outpost, so fantastic. I love the way this Fide Master is playing. The bishop is really stuck back here, but that's typical when you play this uh, opening to get the e pawn and the c pawn. You can't complain about it because you did it to yourself. The attack, the attack is getting strong. Look, the knight is attacking these squares. The queen is coming in here, and he even could bring his rooks into this attack. So I'm starting to worry for black here. This could be another loss for Jupek. Black shifting his pieces for the defense. He simply doesn't have a lot of quantity of pieces here. The trades help him to survive, so that's that's a good idea to trade this knight for the aggressive knight here. Um, that helps him to survive the attack. The attack is still kind of looking a little scary with two rooks and a queen on the board. Even just two rooks and a queen, not even counting the bishops, is a strong attacking force. But the bishops are opposite colored, which helps the attacker even more. Anything this white square bishop attacks, the black square bishop cannot defend. But we are seeing a couple more trades here, so nothing might happen. But look at this. Look at this. Very... Very difficult to defend, and it's only going to get worse. Look at the attack on the on the rook here. This is going to win the exchange as the bishop um, picks up what's behind. So now it's rook against bishop and a win for for white, as I was anticipating. Wow! And that actually came out of the attack. You saw black was forced to play rook g8 to defend this pawn because threat checkmate was threatened on this on this rank here. And once um, once rook g8 was played, he was trapped in this like little bubble where the bishop could just attack it and it couldn't even move. So this is just clean up now. The rook taking everything that it needs to take, which is everything. In a position like this, white can pre-move every move. There's no risk to just you know. There's nothing black can do to make a certain move a bad move. So he can leave his rook here and just promote his pawns. And, and also he's ahead on time. So that's two losses. Very interesting that Jupek lost his final two games uh, right there when it mattered. Right there when it didn't matter, I mean, uh, because he actually won the tournament by a sizable margin, 44 to 35. So congrats. So let's say congrats, Jupek. And then I'll just spam myself in the chat here because there's don't, don't miss. My keyboard is super loud. I'll show you why in a moment. Chess wins. Four, and then I'll paste a link to that because I'm such a spammer that I'm just going to do this. Normally, it'd be quite bad form to to spam your own 
tournament in another tournament, but did I ever say that I was in bad form? I mean, do you like, like, I wonder if I should watch someone super polite who never has bad form. I know. Oh, watch Chess was TV. That guy never says anything rude, and he's always super polite to his opponents. Except for that one time when he spammed his own tournament in another tournament. Except for that. Totally polite. So yeah, that's that's what you get on Chess with TV. G-rated show, for sure. La, La, Maroja, La Maroja did take second place and Serbian Knight in third. Interestingly, the other Fide Master, the other 2400, was he not a Fide Master? Did he withdraw? There was another 2400. Um, he either withdrew. Let's take a look at the back of the pack. I was correct in thinking that there would be over 100 tournaments. Petrosiant lost one game and withdrew. That's a pretty good job. Gold Chess Robot 2200 lost one game and withdrew. Not impressive. And we're not seeing much there. So I guess there wasn't, or unless he just lost some rating points. Serbian Knight, nice performance, up 26 points. That is a very good uh, rating gain for him over the course of the tournament. But Jupek over 100 points. So he went into the tournament a little bit un underrated, perhaps. Uh, but nice. And Chess was ended up in 20th place. So top 20, pretty good considering I withdrew from the tournament. So what you got today was a little taste of what Chess Wiz Cup 4 is going to be like because I'm not going to be playing in that tournament constantly. I'm going to be switching out, commentating on the games like what happened today, which should be interesting. The catch is that these are really slow games. One minute per side, that is so much time. Um, the Chess Wiz Cup 4 is going to be 30 seconds per side. Which, so there's about going to be enough time to say, you know, player one is, is Jupek and, and the black player is player two, and then the game's going to be over. So it's going to be difficult to commentate on such fast games, but it's also going to be a nice challenge. Also, check this out. Check out this prize. I did this because I'm super crazy. The best 50% berserk gets a prize of 50,000 bits, which is part of a Bitcoin. It's worth about $21 today. Um, and that is the person who berserks at least 50% of their games. Now, berserking means you start with half the time. So instead of a luxurious 30 seconds to finish the entire game, you have a luxurious 15 seconds to make all your moves. The average chess game is 40 moves long. So you've got to make three moves per second for the entire game and of course the opponent noticing you have no time is probably going to make moves to extend the game so it's going to be very hard to win any games when berserking so it should be an interesting prize for people who are like well you know i'm probably not going to get first second or third probably like 60,000th. thousandth. you know what i'm going to do is try to get this prize so that should be an interesting thing to watch as well i look forward to you guys suiciding yourselves trying to berserk should be interesting. So that's going to be March 26th at 3 p.m. GMT. Uh, it would be 4 p.m., but we're having some daylight savings. For me, in my country, daylight savings is tomorrow, so don't forget to change your, your clocks. People who are in the United States and many other countries are <clears throat> now or in the next few weeks or maybe just happened a few weeks ago. So it's going to be around that time. So <clears throat> by the way, by the way, you can find the time on the internet. I love the internet. Sorry, I'm losing my voice, so this is the end of the show. This has been Chess with TV. Thanks for watching.